Father God, we just pray you take this word, Father, and grant it deep within our hearts, Father. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. We thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you came and you lived and you died all to set us free. We give you praise. We give you glory. You're a mighty God. You're more than enough. And I pray you just take this word. Father, help us, Lord, to in our daily lives to walk this word out, Father. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to tell you a little story first before I get started here. Uh, from 1978 to 1980, in that period, uh, I was going to Bible college at Southwestern Assembly of God Bible College. And towards the end of that, I worked at a place called Joy Petroleum. And it was a place that made oil drilling equipment. And uh, I worked there, and, and I let people know that I was a Bible college student. And so this one guy walked up to me, and he, because most of the Bible college students, they were ragging on this guy, telling him he should quit smoking and quit drinking and all that kind of stuff. And he came up to me and he said, I suppose you're going to tell me the same thing. I said, no, I'm not going to tell you that. He, and he was kind of surprised. And, and I, said, I said, you're not calling yourself a Christian, are you? No, I'm not. I said, well, if I wasn't a Christian, I'd probably be doing those things too. I said, and, he, and it shocked, kind of shocked him. You see, we don't judge the world. That's right. That's what the Bible says. But we judge those that are within the church. Amen. The Bible says that. I'm going to read that to you in a minute. Here. But, but we're able to reach the world if we're not ragging on them uh -huh. for evil things they're doing. Right. So then they're more receptive. So that guy was wanting me to talk to him about the things of God. Because I didn't yeah. chew him out for doing Amen. what he's doing. Amen. So if we we'll, we're able to reach more people, if we'll just walk in love with them. Amen. And they see the love of God in our life. And then they want what we've got. So I was able to, the whole time I was there, I was able to minister to that guy. Because I didn't judge him. <coughs> because he was a sinner anyhow. Mm -hmm. He knew he was a sinner. So sinners sin. <laughs> That's why they're called sinners, okay? <laughs> now, as long as we're living for Christ, James says, James says, the last two verses of James says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the faith, and another one of you convert them, let him know that he which converteth the sinner. You see, when he went back into sin, he was now a sinner. That's right. Let him that know that he which converteth the sinner from the errors of his ways shall save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So, we should keep living for God. Amen. We need to keep, Peter said, Peter said, it would be better if you never did to know the way of righteousness yeah. than to know it and fall away. He said, because it's worse than the first. Worse than the first. He said, it's like the pig, it's like the swine who got cleansed from Cleanse, wallowed in this hole again and slime again. And it's like the, the dog who vomited, eating his own vomit and stuff. So it's worse. It's worse if you if you know what you're doing and you still do it. How do Turn me to Matthew chapter seven. Now Kathy reminded me of this, and and uh, the other day. We talk about the word a lot at the house, and, and uh, she's really a great woman, woman of God. Now, this is the words of Jesus. Now, a lot of people quote this, but they don't quote the full thing, what, what the whole intent of it is. Judge not that you be not judged, okay? Now, the whole thing is... He's talking to people that's not living right. He said, if you're, not, if you're not living right, you shouldn't be judging other people. That's what he's saying. For, what, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye, 
but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. Now he's talking to people who are being hypocritical. Now hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. So if we're doing evil things, we shouldn't be judging other people. Because right. God's going to judge us with the same judgment we judge other people. Right? And turn with me to, to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. This is the Apostle Paul. And he's dealing with some sin in the church. Now, churches are supposed to have some sinners in them. So they can get born again. So they can get saved. So they can get delivered. Right? Yes. But they shouldn't be calling themselves Christians if they're not living the life. Now here Paul's dealing with, now later in 2 Corinthians, they got so upset with this thing he told them that he had to tell them in 2 Corinthians, his other letter, I know I made you really sorrowful in the first letter because he was reproving them about this. They were, they were letting these people live among them, <coughs> living evil among them, and call themselves Christians, call themselves brothers. And what was happening is there was actually a man in the church who was having sexual relations with his father's wife. Now, some people think it's a mother-in-law, but it could have been his mother. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty sick stuff. Yeah. So Paul said, Paul said, it's reported commonly among you that there's fornication, that sexual immorality among you, and such fornication is not as much named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he had done this deed, and he might be taken away. He said he should be taken away from among you. For I say verily, as absent from the body, but present in the spirit, I have judged. Say judged. judged. Already. Paul had judged this person already, as though I were present, concerning him that had done this deed. Now the problem was not that he was doing an evil thing. The problem was he was in the church and they were calling him as their brothers. They were calling him a Christian. He, he, Paul is dealing with them about this. For in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together and my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of his flesh that the spirit may be saved in the in the day of the Lord. Yeah. So what he was saying is you need, you need to turn that guy over to Satan mm -hmm. so he can attack his flesh. So now see, some people got to hit bottom before they look up. Amen. It's like the prodigal son. He, he, he took his father's inheritance, his inheritance from his father, and he went and squandered it on riotous living. Yep. And finally lost everything. And, he, and, and there's a drought come on the land. And it got so bad that he was feeding swine. He was looking at these corn husks that he's feeding the swine. They look, started looking good to him. He came to, Bob said he came to himself. He said, even the slaves in my father's house, they have enough to eat plus extra. They've even got extra. You see, God wants us to have enough and extra so we can be a blessing. Abraham was blessed to be a blessing. We're, we're blessed with Abraham to be a blessing. In Christ Jesus, we are heirs of Abraham because Jesus is the seed of Abraham. Amen. Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And we're in Christ, so now we're Abraham's seed. And God blessed Abraham to be a blessing. God blesses us to be a blessing. Amen. God wants you to have extra Amen. so you can give to every good work. That's what God wants. One time, I used to be think I was being humble, but I found out I was being stupid. I was always, I was always believed God for just enough to get by for me and my family. Matter of fact, one time we were sitting out here at the Walmart parking lot, and I had an old car that was all rusted out, and and uh, and my wife was looking around. And she said, "Everybody must be rich." And I, I thought, "What in the world?" 
Everybody must be. And I said, what, what are you talking about? They, they're being, no, she said, look at, everybody's got newer cars. They really do. And, and, and here we're driving this dump. It was such a dump that she got some spray paint and painted it to look like it was a camouflage car. But how, how much did I pay for that car? $150. $150. It, only ran, it was a six-cylinder. It's an V8 engine, but it only ran on six cylinders. I looked at it, took it to one mechanic. He said, I don't even know how this thing's running. <laughs> And the engine caught fire twice. Oh, boy. That's still ran. <laughs> so anyhow, I, I told her this. I said, oh, we've got enough to get by, and that's good enough. I, we always have our bills paid. I said, we've got enough to get by, and that's good enough. Well, one day, one day I, we had a friend, and they were in real bad financial trouble, and they needed money. But we, we just had enough to get by. And I, I felt sorry for them. I wanted to give them some money, but I just had enough to get by. And so I was praying to the Lord, and I said, I said, Lord, I, I really would like to help them, but, but I've just got enough to get by. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, you've been being selfish. And that hurt my feelings. I thought I was just being humble. He said, you've only been believing for you to have enough to get by. He said, you need to be believing me for more than enough so you can be a blessing. I'd repent. Mm -hmm. I'd repent. And so from that point on, I quit praying, Lord, give me enough to get by. Start praying, Lord, give me more than enough so I can be a blessing. And you know what God did that? He started blessing me more than enough. Where I always had extra to give to everybody I needed to give to. Give to. Everybody the Lord led me to give to. I always had the money to do it since that day. Since I prayed like, start praying like that. So we need to not think about just us. We think, how can I be a blessing? Amen. How can I touch somebody's life? Mm -hmm. And then, Lord, lead me, guide me, direct me, and then follow his direction and be obedient. If the Lord tells you to give something, just give it. Amen. Just be obedient. There was a situation in the Old Covenant where God told Saul to do certain things through the prophet Samuel. And so Saul, he had told Saul to, to kill all the people and to kill all the animals in this battle they were having. But Saul got in there and he was a king. He could do whatever he wanted to, right? So he got in there and he saved the king. He saved the best of the animals. And so, so finally Samuel came along. He said, what is that noise I hear? Is the animals. He said, well, I saved the best for sacrifice to God. And then Samuel said, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. He said, obedience is better than sacrifice. And then he found out, and he said, I also saved the king. Oh boy. So you know what the prophet did? He said, give me a sword. He took a sword and cut up the king into pieces. He cut him up into pieces. That's like Elijah did with those prophets mm -hmm. of Baal. He cut them up to pieces. We need to obey God. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But, but we need to understand the word of God is truth. Yes. We need to see God's face and read his word and believe his word Amen. and obey his word. Amen. And then God, he will show his mighty works through us to us and through us. Hallelujah. Yeah. We, we sing a song, Make Me a Blessing. Amen. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing out of my life. Let Jesus shine. Make me a blessing. Make me Make me a blessing to someone today. Hallelujah. That works. That's all good. Make me a blessing 
to someone I pray. Amen. Make me a blessing yeah. to someone today. Yes. We need to think about how we can be a blessing to other people and walk in love with people yes. where they actually see the love of Christ in us. Yes. Yes. Don't attack somebody that, that God cares about because God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. All should turn away from their sins from their heart. Yes. Now the truth is, God knows our hearts. Yes. Amen. When we turn away from our hearts, God knows. Come on. And then he immediately sends the Spirit of the Son Christ into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And then he enables us to walk right, to live right, to do what's right. As long as we're being led by the Spirit of God. In Romans chapter 8, it says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. If sons, then heirs, and if heirs, then join heirs of Jesus Christ. So in Christ Jesus, positionally in Christ Jesus, we are heirs of God, we're, we're children of God, just like Jesus is child, the child of God, the child of the Son of God. The Bible says, He has made the firstborn among many brethren. We're the many brethren. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise Lord. We are. Glory. Praise yes. your Father. Yes. One day, he was, he was ministering in his house. Yes, Jesus had a house. Even though he told some people, if you're following me, I don't have anywhere to stay out. There's no, there, I'm not like the, the birds have nests and stuff like that, but I have nowhere to lay my head. He was talking about when he was out traveling and ministering. Yes. But he had a house in Capernaum, and he ministered at his house. As a matter of fact, when they let that man down through the roof, that was Jesus' house. He didn't condemn him for, for tearing a, them for tearing a hole in the roof. They were just trying to get the man to Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. Yes. Yes. He said, Son, he said, Your sins be forgiven you. Yeah. Now that kind of there were some Pharisees around in there, because they were there to see what he was saying. There were some Pharisees in there when he said that. Immediately they thought in their heart. How can he forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. And he knew their hearts mm -hmm. by the Holy Ghost. He operated as a man filled with the Holy Spirit in the earth. Yes. He called himself the Son of Man. He was a man. He didn't operate as God. Even though he was the Son of God, he didn't operate as God. He operated a man filled with the Holy Ghost. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. Lord. And he gave that same Holy Ghost anointing to us. Amen. So now those gifts of the Holy Spirit like in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, all those gifts are available to us as Christians, as Spirit-filled Christians, so we can walk in these same works, we can do the same works that Jesus did. <clears throat> One of the greatest things Jesus did, he lived a pure and holy life without Amen. sin. He who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God through him. It's only through Jesus Christ. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. We can live pure and holy. Yes. God has called us to holiness, yes, he to purity. And we can't do it on our own. But through Christ, we can do all things. Amen. And I can today, I can live for God. Yes. Today, and every day is today. Yeah. Yep. I went to a barbershop down here one day, down here in Excelsior. And they get a sign up on the wall. It says, free haircuts tomorrow. I went back the next day. I said, I want my free haircut. I said, that's for tomorrow. <laughs> See, tomorrow never comes. Amen. Every day is today. Every day, the Bible says, today is a day of salvation. Every day is a day of salvation. Every day is a day of deliverance. Yes. Notice, I can live for God today. Amen. Tomorrow will be today again. I can live for God today. Tomorrow will be today again. I can live for God today. So when I wake up early in the morning, I start giving God praise and glory, thanking Him for His goodness. As soon as I wake up. Because today I can live for God. Today I can live for God. Amen. Today I can live free from sin. Yes. Jesus took my infirmities and he bare my sins. And with his stripes I was healed. Jesus bare my sins in his own body on the tree. So I could be dead to sin and yes. live under righteousness. Yes. Paul said in Romans chapter 6, Reckoning ye yourselves therefore to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God Thank through Christ Lord. Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise your Father. Says we need Amen. Hallelujah. Your glorying is not good. You know not that, don't you know that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? 
Now, now, Brother Jones here, he had a cancer on his forehead. And they cut that cancer off. Right. If they hadn't cut that cancer off, what would have happened? I don't know. It could have spread through your whole body. It could have spread through your whole body. You see, just a little cancer can destroy the whole body. If you just let a little bit of sin go in a church and just people think that that's okay, it can destroy the whole body. That's right. There's a scripture that says that it's abomination to God to sow discord among the brethren. It's an abomination. Now, God hates six things in the seventh an abomination of God. One of the things that God hated was to shed innocent blood. But abomination was to sow discord among the brethren. Why? Because that destroys the whole church. To sow discord among the brethren. That, you, you really have to get cancers out like that. It's a cancer to the body. So what Paul was saying to the church, he said, if you let that thing go and continue, that's going to destroy the whole church. Because they're going to think it's okay to do that kind of stuff. That's what he was saying. A little leaven, leaven of the whole lump. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. In other words, he said, he said basically, kick this guy out of the church. He calls himself a Christian, but he's not living the life. You need to kick him out of the church. That, he may, that, you may, that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover has sacrificed for us. That, let us keep the feast, not in the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We're, we're to love people, but we're also to deal with sinful things in the church. I mean, if we're not, if we're not bold enough to, to deal with stuff, we're, we're going to ruin the church. So there's times I have to do that. I have very seldom had to do that, but there's times I have to do it. Because I don't want stuff to get spoiled in our church. Hallelujah. I wrote to you an epistle not to company with fornicators. Verse 10. But yet not all, not with fornicators of this world. He's saying a person that's a worldly person, you should fellowship with them. You should have tried to help them to win them to Christ. But he said, I'm not talking about a person that's in the world that's not living for Christ. No, it's somebody who's in the church calling themselves Christians and still they're living an immoral life. And they should be dealt with. That's what he's saying. Yet not altogether the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters. For then must needs you go out of the world. But now I've written unto you not to keep company. If any man be called a brother, if any man be called a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous, or idolater, or reller, or drunkard, or extortioner, with such in one, with such in one, not, no, not to eat. He said, don't even eat with people that's, that call themselves Christians and is living like that. For what, what have I to do to judge them that are without? He said, I don't have anything to do to judge them without. God judges them. But we do have, but not, but do we not judge them that are within? In other words, he says, those that are within, we have to deal with stuff. Because God wants the church to be pure and holy. Amen. So we need to deal with people that call themselves Christians, but are living ungodly lives. Paul, to, Paul told, uh, there was one situation in the church of Corinth where the, there was a, a Christian, called, called himself a Christian, that was, that was defrauding other people in the church. And so one of the guys was going to take him to court, to public court. And Paul said, it would be better for you to go ahead and suffer the wrong than to take your brother to court. He said, or just have somebody in the church judge the thing. Now he said, godly people should be able to judge between situations. And then he dealt with the person that was defrauding his brother. He said, don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? The apostle Paul dealt with about that. And he said, neither fornicate, now he lists a whole list of things, shall not enter the kingdom of God. We're not to make it to heaven. So we need to understand that we need to live holy, and we can live holy because Christ is in us. Yes. He enables us to live holy. God's called us to holiness. God's called us to good works. 
God's called us to live right. Amen. We should encourage one another to live right, to good works. Amen. We should. Because in Hebrews chapter 10, it says, let's turn over there real quick. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Father. Start with verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You see, under the old covenant, they had to cleanse the holy of holies so the Holy Ghost could come down into the holy of holies. But this is by a new and living way. Now we have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have. Our bodies have. But this is a new and living way. It's not the, under the old covenant. When Jesus hang on the cross, the Bible says the earth from noon to three o'clock in the afternoon, everything became black, pitch black. And the Bible says the earth shook. The Bible says the veil of the temple that went between the regular part of the temple and the Holy of Holies, it was split from the, right in the middle from the top to the bottom. They tossed the Bible college. It was so thick that it couldn't be tore. It was like four to six inches thick that that veil was. And something that couldn't be tore was tore from the top to the bottom. That's when the Holy Spirit no longer dwelt in temples made with hands. Amen. Now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. No, you not. No, you not. You are the temple. No, you not. No, you not. You are the temple. No, you not. No, you not. You are the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. By a new and living way which He has consecrated for us. Through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. That literally, is in the Greek, that's literally an evil moral consciousness. And let our bodies be washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another to provoke Unto love, that's agape, the God kind of love. And to good works, say good works. good works. Not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. For this reason, for if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Now that's kind of scary sounding. Though. One time I was praying in a prayer room, uh, over the last church I was in and uh, I was praying there and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and started explaining see the word of the Lord comes to me to explain explain the scriptures to me now he does that because I made an agreement with him in about 1982 and since then the word of the Lord's come to me I made an agreement to quit watching TV preachers and read other people's books for my doctrine he said I teach it so ever since then I've quit doing that and and the, whole, the word of the Lord just comes to me to teach me scriptures. So I'm praying in that room, and the Lord speaks to me about this one scripture right here. He said, do you understand what that means? I said, not really. That's kind of scary sounding. He, and he, he, he explained it to me. He said this. He said, what that scripture means, it means when we choose to go back into sin that, that we've been delivered from, the sacrifice Christ provided for us no longer remains on our life. Okay. But then he said, but that doesn't mean you're lost forever. He said, but if you'll confess that sin, a confession of repentance, and turn away from that sin, I'll forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. See, that says that in 1 John. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Everything about everything God, if it's really God, he'll tell you it's going to be in the Word. Yeah. It'll be in the Word. So. And we should test it by the word. He says, not only does there remain no more sacrifice for sin, but then there's a certain fearful looking for as of judgment and fiery ind indignation, which shall devour the adversary. So we become going from a saint to going back into sin. Now we become God's adversary instead of God's child. 
Then we become an adversary of God. And there's a certain fearful looking for us of judgment. I had one person who had got, was a Christian. And they'd gotten into adultery. And they emailed me. They said, I just felt like God walked away from me. I said, God did not walk away from you. I said, you walked away from God. Yeah. That's right. That's right. When we choose to do evil things with knowledge, then we walk away from God. Yeah. It's certain that's the Holy Ghost dealing with us. That's his job. Holy Spirit deals with, and just, remember this, judgment begins in the house of the Lord. God would judge his people. Hallelujah. Verse 28, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God? And hath counted the blood of the covenant with you, wherewith he was sanctified. Notice, this is a person that was sanctified, was made holy. An unholy thing, and hath done, done despite to the spirit of grace. For we know him that saith, vengeance belongeth to me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And, another, and again, the Lord shall judge his people. His people yep. it is a fearful thing to all the hands of the living God. Yes. It is, I mean, I, I, I'm... I don't want to go back to sin because I don't want to go to hell. Because when, whoever I yield my members to obey, that's whose slave I become. Whether of obedience unto righteousness or sin unto death. For the wages of sin is death. That's why Jesus came to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Thank you, as long as we keep our eyes on Christ, we don't have to go back into sin. We can live holy as he is holy. For without holiness, no man will see the Lord. But we can have joy in that we can do what's right. We can live right. We, we're, we are all ministers of reconciliation to reconcile the world unto God through Jesus Christ. So if we just walk in love and show the love of God. I mean, if you just live right in front of people, they're going to want what you have. They will want what you have. A long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> I used to drive a semi-truck. I was worked for a company where we was always a team operation. We ran all over the country. But I came in off a run. And I, I was with another guy. They put us up with different guys. So I was with another guy, and we came off, off a run. And we came into my a terminal in Springfield, Missouri, that our terminal was. We got in there, it was like 6 o'clock in the evening, and there was supposed to be another guy waiting because I had been driving all day, and he was supposed to start driving. I was supposed to get in the bunk. So I got there, he wasn't there. And we we're supposed to pick up, a, a, we we're supposed to drop off a load, unload a load down in Dallas, Texas at 4 o'clock in the morning. And so we were supposed to leave out at 6. We could have made it by down there in 10 hours, but... But uh, anyhow, so the guy, I waited on the guy, I waited on the guy. He didn't get there till midnight. And he was fall down drunk. The guy was fall down drunk. And I had to drive. So I ended up not getting there. I mean, I still had to pull over and sleep some, but just because my body couldn't stay awake that long. And so, so, so anyhow, we didn't get there till like 9 o'clock in the morning. But... Uh, Anyhow, we had missed our appointment to, to unload. So we had to wait to get unloaded. We didn't get started unloaded until about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So, and so we're unloading. It's a whole truckload of canned goods. So we're unloading these canned goods. And this guy, his mouth you would not believe. Now, some of you probably would. But I'm just saying the guy has, had the most filthy mouth. And I, and I was like, God, why? And I had like, I had like, I was limping because I'd like sprained my ankle a couple days before that, and I was limping. And so, so, and I'm, I'm unloading this box, and this guy's just cussing, cussing, cussing. And I'm, I'm saying, God, why did you put me with this vile person, you know? And so, but I'm just, I'm just doing what's right. And, I'm, and so I, I'm trying to get unloaded as fast as possible because we've got another load to go pick up that afternoon. I have to get unloaded. So, so anyhow, so, so I grabbed two boxes of canned goods. And I picked it up, so I picked up my back, just cracked and popped and 
It went out. It went out. My back went out. And he heard it too. And the first thing I thought, well, at least I'll be able to get in the truck and rest because I won't have it. It's still over half the truck that needs to be unloaded. So what we had to do, we had to put them on, put them on pallets, and then we had like the little hand carts that we could cart them out of the truck. So as soon as I thought that, something rose up in me. It's the word of God. Amen. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. So, I, so instead of saying, okay, I'm going to go into the truck, I said, no, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. That's what I said to him. He looked at me like I was crazy. But I kept unloading, but it hurt every time I grabbed the box. But I kept unloading. And every time I grabbed the box, pain shot through my whole body. And so when, when about 10 or 15 minutes of doing that, and the power of God, bam, hit my body. And total healing went all the way through my body. My back was healed. And even my ankle was healed. And then I could even unload faster than him. And, and anyhow, I didn't ever talk to him about Jesus. But he saw the power of God in my life. The next day we were driving through. We went and got another load. And, and the next day we were driving through New Mexico. We're right in the middle of the desert. I look over at him. And tears were running down his face. And I said, are you okay? He said, yeah, but I want us to receive Jesus. Isn't that something? Amen. So I led him to the Lord. I'm telling you, I was with him for two more weeks. He was a changed man. He was no longer a filthy mouth person. After we got, got to California, he said, will you baptize me? <laughs> I said, oh, I, don't even, I mean, we're in California, but we're in the desert, you know. So. Water baptism doesn't save us. Only the blood of Jesus Amen. saves us. Only our immersion into Jesus Christ, our baptism into Jesus Christ makes us a new creation in yes, Christ Jesus. You, but I'm telling you, that man, he was a total, I mean, it was, it was miraculous. It was night and day. I mean, he went from a sinner to a saint Amen. in one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from that point, I'm telling you, he was like a, he was like a, I was like, well, thank God. <laughs> this guy was the most wicked sinner. Now he's the most, he, now he's on fire for God. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy. But just by living in front of people. I, I was in the army as a chaplain's assistant from 1974 to 1977. And Kathy and I got married January 9th, 1976, but this was before Kathy and I got married, but but uh, I'm sitting in my office, I was at, I was at the post prison, it's called the confinement facility, I was a chaplain assistant there for the first three year and a half, I was in the army and I had the, one of the guards, I had never met this guy, but he came in my office one day, he, he did this to me, he said, I've been watching you, that's what he said, I thought, oh no, these guys are police, these are all policemen. The guards. I was an MP battalion. And so he said, I've been watching you. And he said it like that. I thought, oh no. What's, what have I done? He said, I've been watching your life, he said. He said, and I'd like to receive Christ. That's what he said. <laughs> so just the life we live in front of people. If you'll live a holy life in front of people, it draws people. When we walk in the light, it draws people to the Lord. That's why Jesus said, let your light shine. Yeah. Don't hide it under a bushel. Mm -hmm. Live your life for God in the open. Yeah. If you'll do that, and pe now I'm telling you, you let people know you're a Christian, they're going to be watching you. Right. Live your life pure and holy because that makes them want what you have. Amen. Before, I, before I led him to the Lord that day, before I got out, then I transferred to another company. After I'd been, after I was, after the first year and a half, I transferred to another company up on Custard Hill, that's in Fort Riley, Kansas. And so before I before I checked out of the army, this guy came and found me. This guy that I led to the Lord, and he once said, "I just wanted to tell you this." He said, "He said, he said, when I went home, I led my whole family to the Lord." 
He said, and we're all working in a local church now. We're, we're all on fire for God. Hallelujah. And so that was so great to me. That was so great to me. Another time I was, I was driving a truck for, for Simmons Trucking Company. I hear that was the last truck company I worked for. And uh, there was, there's this lady that worked for my dispatcher that she took me, she was taking me to my truck. It was getting some work done on it. Was, the work was done. So she's taking me to my truck and she starts talking to me. And she starts telling me how she, it was right before Thanksgiving and she was going home for Thanksgiving. But her mother was really bad shape. She didn't know if she'd make it because her mother couldn't eat and she was in really bad shape. And she thought that she'd probably be dead, dead by the time she got there. I said, I said, well, I'm a Christian. I said, and we believe in divine healing. I said, would you like me to pray for your mother? She said, would you do that? I said, sure, I'd do that. And so, and so then I dropped her off and after I left, I started praying for her mother. And so when she got back from Thanksgiving, when she got back from Thanksgiving, she came. She came back to my where I work. Uh, there's the the area where we get our loads is a different part of the company. So she came back to talk to me, and she said to me, "She said, did you pray for my mother?" I thought maybe her mother died. You know when she said that. I said, "Yes, I did." She said, "Well, I just want you to know, my mother just took a miraculous turn, and she's doing great. Amen. She's doing great." And so then about a year later, I hadn't seen her since that point, but about a year later, I was getting ready to leave the company because I was going into ministry full time. So I was getting ready to leave the company and she came back to my, my area and talked to me. She said, I just wanted to tell you my mother did pass away, finally. She said, but she's old, you know, so. But she, said, she finally did, but before she did, she received Jesus Christ. Amen. And she said, I want to let you know I did too. Amen. 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 You see, if we we'll just live for God yeah. in front of the world yeah. and live right, yeah. it draws people to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It draws people to God. So the goodness, the Bible says, the goodness of God draws people to repentance. So just live good in front of people. Yeah. Let the world see Christ in you. Yes. If we'll do that on a daily basis, we can touch lives we don't even know about. That's right. God uses. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Thank my message. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all.